right, what is up everybody? It's your girl, Jada Reese here, AKA Diamond, and we're back with another video. Sorry if I sound stopped up. I'm kind, I kinda am, but not really. You know what I mean? Like, I got my Zyrtec, I got my water. I feel fine, but I know I probably sound a little stopped up. So, sorry if that disgusts you, but I definitely am not st stopped up. I got everything out. It's just my, um, my sinuses need to just like unswell or whatever that is that makes you sound like that uh, but yeah I feel fine so anyways hey everybody it's me we're back with another video um today we have been reading we are actually reading three books right now and we are reading um a sexual persona or persona by Paglia. What's her first name? I forgot her first name already, but her last name is Paglia. And um, it is a series of essays that she wrote in college back in the, I think, 70s or 80s. And it's been widely discussed. It's a bunch of ideas, a plethora of ideas regarding sex, class, um, race, um, religion, um, and a host of other authors that she embeds in there and so it's sort of like also a gateway book and it introduces you to so many different um themes camellia so camille camille paglia so yeah i've been reading and catching up on my sexual persona i've also been reading um home by marilyn robinson and of course we are still reading the tome that is lonesome dove we've also been reading lonesome dove so i have given all three of those books one hour of my time today and the sexual persona let me tell y'all something that book is as a young woman she was very much well written and well read so a lot of those yeah authors and everything like that a lot of those references would go over my head but i totally understand with every fiber of my being what she's saying and so one thing to note about sexual persona and camellia paglia she is very divisive and so not everything in her novel is going to resonate with you as a person as a me especially i'm speaking of myself but i know for a fact it's not going to resonate with you not everything in there but she makes a lot of um valid and prevalent points points as it relates to just society as a whole and paganism in our society here in western culture as far as religion is concerned and western thoughts and ideas um regarding um the patriarchy that is here and like the way that men perceive women in our bodies and the way that we have been taught to believe about uh, our sex and about class and about discretion and just things like that like it's just a lot in there and it's a lot to talk about and i have to tell you um i have to say um a lot of that is is valid she makes some valid points and it's uh it gets you to thinking if that book doesn't do anything it's going to get you to um definitely think and i like that and i think that's of course that that's what she meant by writing the book so i'm starting to drain now that i've taken my um zyrtec so that's one thing i love about zyrtec it definitely dries you out but also active activates water also activates a lot of um coal that you might have stuck inside of you so that's one thing i most definitely love about um have drinking a lot of water so anyway yeah that's what sexual persona is doing it is activating a lot of my thinking um a lot of things that i have suppressed inside of me that i you know things that you put on the back burner that you no longer wish to think about her novel or sorry not it's not a novel it's 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 a criticism her criticism is definitely getting me to think and it's generating new ideas in me and that's what i love so yeah i'm loving that i'm enjoying that um now also home so i started marilyn robinson's home uh last night so i'm on like the third ish chapter they're not really separated to chapters but you can tell when 
the thoughts are gonna break you can just tell because there's like a line on the page when it's like entering into a new setting or a new idea a new thought so I'm around third the third thought or chapter three so home is um, it is the second it is the second book in the Gilead series the series is a quartet I think who knows I don't know if the last book is Jack because she has written these novels very stretched out um, very much they're very they all have years and years and years between them but so far there are four books in the Gilead series and Gilead was my favorite book of last year and so I am on to the second book in the series which is called home home is written from the perspective of glory glory is Reverend John Bowden's I think his name is yeah, it's John no it's not John I, th I think his name is John or Thomas but anyway um, Glory is Reverend John Ames's best friend, uh, Reverend Bowden's daughter. She is his daughter, and it is is written from her perspective. She is controlling the narrative in this in this particular book in the series. And once again, of course, is that that writing that we all know and love, that phenomenal writing. One thing about Marilyn Robinson, you do have to be on the mature side mentally to enjoy her her books there is no doubt about it it's not her stories are not for the faint in mind and heart they're not for you if you just desire a lot of um plot it, it although it is a plot to this novel because what's happening is it's written during the same time and the same setting as when Gilead was written that is very interesting actually but from the perspective of glory so everything we read in Gilead is also going to be in glory in home from glory's perspective but you have so many other things that are introduced of course in this novel writ being that is written from glory's perspective about reverend john ames about john uh, her brother jack about her father about her and her life so I like it you know and I love that it's written from a female perspective and I've already kind of gotten connected to um, Glory because one thing about Glory she's 38 I'm not quite 38 but she's 38 she has a master's degree in education she has a, um, she has a bachelor's in English literature and she also decided she didn't want to be a teacher anymore when I read those parts I was like hooked hooked Marilyn Robinson she got me and I'm hooked um, because this woman is going through what I'm going through right now, you know, and you know, I just I just love it. So Yeah, like I was also saying once again the um The writing is phenomenal impeccable the storytelling is just good just like the themes that are already present in the novel I just love it. Um, you definitely get a sense of like that middle child syndrome that people have, that children have, when you have a sibling who is most definitely considered to be the favorite and like she's now the caretaker of their father who is in his old age. She's the only child back home taking care of him up until John comes back. If you don't know anything about Gilead, Jack or John or Johnny, he comes back home and he's been away from home for um, what seems to be 20 years and so after that you just go on the tail and the journey of what's going on in this little mythical town um, of Gilead so yeah that's that's that that's what's going on right now in that book and so now let's segue into Lonesome Dub so uh, <laughs> I am I was at over 50 I'm in like I'm in like the 400 page range of Lonesome Dub so First of all, Lonesome Dove is 730 pages. So you kind of can do the math and the percentage on um, kind of where I am percentage wise. I would say I'm about like 55 ish percent through um, the book. And so um, with that, a lot of things have finally transpired that you knew were coming, like dealing with the Western and dealing with. Um, them on their journey from one part of the country to a whole different part of the country going through the plains the great plains going through all of the weather changes uh during that time period everything is just encompassing and happening the villains have entered into the chat um people have died 
It is just one great big epic. It is just excellent. I'm telling you, if you are a fan of Game of Thrones, of George R.R. Martin, if you are a fan of Lord of the Rings, you will love Lonesome Dove. I would say the only the only thing that will stop you from really liking Lonesome Dove is if you don't like Westerns. If you don't like Westerns, Western Top, that honestly won't even stop you because it's just so marvelously crafted it's just so well done that yeah that won't even really stop you um you should just really try it out it's just a well written phenomenally crafted novel with just some of everything going on because i haven't really decided to take you guys on my true lonesome dove journey it's kind of gonna be hard to just like talk about um the story um as far as the characters are concerned um i think that i can I, there's no i think to it i know that i can because i did introduce you guys in my like last talkie talkie video to them um but i don't know i would just have to watch that video back and see exactly what it is that i said so that now in this particular part of the story i can like embed what's going on now because it's just so interesting and I do want to share it actually I really do want to share I really do want to share it and I really do want to talk about it so yeah those are my updates right now I have to sneeze I'm gonna be right back So I am currently sitting here reading Home by Marilyn Robinson. Um, last time I spoke to you guys was a few days ago. I have since lost the, um, the whole sinus allergy issue. It's dropped off and left me, praise the Lord. Um, it is the weekend. It is the weekend. Today is, what's today? It, never mind what today is. But I am currently reading. The last time I talked to you guys, we were talking about Lonesome Dove. We were talking about Sexual Persona um, by Camille Paglia. And I was also talking about Home by Marilyn Robinson. So... I will say home in particular has captured my special attention. This book, this book is amazing. So there's something very intimate about it um, regarding all of the aspects of what it means to come home. Um, imagine you're a person who's been away from your family, from your hometown, from your place of birth, from your from your, the house that you grew up in for years and years and years. Um, I think I mentioned in the last clip that Jack has been away for 20 years and he has finally made his way back home. His mom has died. His father is very old and aging. And his um, sister, the middle sister, is also there. Who That's who uh, mainly we're hearing from, Gloria the middle sister and Jack and subsequently they are the two siblings who kind of sort of don't have it together regarding like you know everything and like all the aspects to this life I mean honestly what is life what is having yourself together I don't even know what that means but as it's described in the story Gloria doesn't really have it together she's no longer with her fiance she's no longer a teacher she just feels lost in this world and Jack on the other hand as I mentioned spoiler alert at the end of Gilead you learn that Jack has um, married a black woman now we're, we're talking about 1950s this is 1950s America um, hold on <laughs> it is <laughs> um, it's um if look at me was a car <laughs> it would be that <laughs> That's exactly right. um so yeah it was a loud car coming by so anyway um we were talking about jack and how 
this story, Gilead, and this story are simultaneously being told in the same like time frame. And so the time period is 1950s and Jack is a white male in America. Uh, Gilead is a fictional town in Iowa and he has married a black woman who is from the South, mainly St. Louis, it's St. Louis, Memphis, they're over in that area. If you don't know, St. Louis is about three hours away from Memphis, Tennessee, three or four hours. So it's like in the South basically. And so her father doesn't approve of Jack. Um, he thinks that Jack you know, he, he, he probably thinks like Jack is marrying her based on some sort of like slavery fetish or whatever, call, whatever the case may be. But um, in hindsight, in retrospect, I can't wait to hear from Jack because I do have Jack's book also. I just bought Jack. But I really, Jack really loves this woman. Um, he really loves her. And so he's also had a baby. They've had a baby together and everything like that. And so right now what you, 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 you can hear um, I, what is her name? Hold on. I'm talking about his wife. Um, Jack's wife's name is Della. Um, you can hear that Della has sort of like inspired him to move in a different direction and be a better man and a better person. And he just kind of sort of wants everyone else to see that part of him. And so right now what you're getting is like the sibling sibling rivalry aspect of the story you're hearing a lot about how Gloria feels about her older brother coming back home and how you know their dad really loves him the most and how dare he come in and take over I've been here taking care of our father no one else has been here and he comes and everything is like amazing for him and and then you kind of see him kind of massage that out of her out of Gloria and kind of they're opening up to one another and they're starting to kind of understand each other in the age that they are now and get to know one another on at this new particular phase in their lives and he's sort of also now starting to coach he starts starting to coach Gloria into the idea of Della coming to live with them now mind you Gloria has no idea that Della is black he hasn't said that much, but he has been talking about certain things like understanding or talking about W.E.B. Du Bois and like things of that nature. And like, you know, you can you can tell he has some sort of influence um, regarding the African-American experience. And someone has been talking to him about what it is to be black in America right now in the 1950s. You can tell. But, oh, you just don't know. No one knows right now that it's because he has married a black woman. And so a lot of times, like, in a lot of states, um, in a lot of states in the 1950s and 60s, and I think up until, like, the 70s or 80s, it was illegal to even marry outside of your race. So it's quite illegal right now that... Della and Jack have married one another also so that's why he's kind of like really on the fence about letting people know that he's married this black woman wanting her to come to where he lives and all the things of that nature and that sort um so yeah that's where we are in the story that's where we are in the book and I don't know I think I think we can probably kind of sort of now talk about uh themes themes present in the story so we can now speak on the title home and you can sort of kind of imagine why the book is called home so the book is called home because like what Marilyn Robinson is doing is sort of like signifying and expressing um, what it means like basically I think I think I said this already kind of like what it means to like come home and what home is the smell of home um, your neighbors the scent of the atmosphere that you remember all too well and that you didn't know you missed as much until you made your way back um, loneliness how you realize how lonely you have been before you came back home and also maybe how lonely you were when you were home at the age that you were home and now kind of to be back in that same like familiar place and be a different age and have this new lease on life and this new outlook what home is now and what that means for you um 
there's so many different things that are being said to us here. Uh, and I just love that. I love the ambiguity of like just un reading anything, honestly, and like bringing perspective to your life regarding the the literature that you choose to, to, to take in and how it can apply to you in so many different ways. I love that. And I think that's one of the main reasons why I love Marilyn Robinson so much. Like, the woman is spectacular, okay? She's amazing. This drink that I'm having right now is not good. I typically come to this same place every weekend. Um, I either come here or another place that I'm always at. You guys see the big bookcase of like chess um, memorabilia. Come to these places and I get the same things. And so right now, this margarita that I'm drinking right now, it is just not, it is just not good. And I honestly am not gonna drink it. I'm gonna go back in and get them to make me something different. This is the second time, um, this is the second time that he has um that he has made this drink for me and I just I'm just not feeling it. I just don't like it at all. So so yeah that's that is home for you guys. It's Marilyn Robinson that's home. Um and I just love this book. I love this book a lot. So this um I'm also farther into Lonesome Dove. I also have Lonesome Dove with me. Um, I think I'm not going to talk about Lonesome Dove anymore until I'm finished with it. It's just so much happening in that book. Come on, like it's an 800 page book <laughs> and it's just so much happening. Just know that I am still engulfed in that novel. I've been reading it now for about a week and a half and so I'm down. I'm, up, I'm at the home stretch. I'm about 80% through with it and um I'll just have to talk about that one when I'm completely finished with it, so I'm not even gonna say anything else about it. But regarding Marilyn Robinson, she's a master. I would love to just sit in on one of her classes. I think she's she's a professor. I just would love to be a fly on the wall in one of her classes or just like pay for one of her courses, like go to wherever she teaches at and just like pay to just be in her class. You know, I don't even have to pass it. I just want to listen to her and hear her talk and like learn from her and I know there's lots of lectures and talks that I have been watching because <laughs> I'm obsessed with her um, and so yeah that's that I just want to update you guys I'm just out here this is like one of the first days that we've had really good weather since um, that cold front that we had last week um, like the, in the last clip which was last week I had on a thick ass sweater because it was really cold outside and that was such a befitting night to wear that sweater but now I have on flip flops you know I have on jeans but as you can see I don't have on a jacket and the sun has gone down and it's so beautiful outside and so yeah I'm a summertime I'm a summer girl I'm such a summer spring girl so I'm really loving the weather right now and I just want to come and touch base with you guys and talk to you guys about um, Home by Marilyn Robinson and yeah I think that I'm going to kind of wrap this clip up I'm going to continue on reading and I might speak with you guys one more time before I edit this video and upload it even though I'm not done with the book you know I just it's a reading vlog I'm just here I'm just talking about the books you know I haven't done a vlog in so long where I start and finish a book I don't know when the next time I will do that um, but I'm just touching base with you guys and letting you guys know this is what we got going on I might finish it tonight and wrap it wrap it up tomorrow we shall see we shall see we shall see very reflective very quiet novel as I said before Marilyn Robinson is not for everybody but she's for me <laughs> And I just love her to death. So yeah, I'm gonna sit here and read. I'm not gonna do a little montage reading because I opened up with a montage of me reading. So yeah, I'll talk to you guys in the next clip. Good morning, everybody. It's me, I'm back. With another day for this, um, girl, I guess it's a reading vlog. Who at this particular point 
it is it's a reading vlog but what's this um but yeah so i'm just incorporating a little bit of my also like just like my regular day um today is sunday and i'm about to get ready to go running um i'm not gonna go to the gym i've really been enjoying um just running outside i really have and um i can tell the difference in my strength my endurance my legs are tight are tightening up what seems like faster than when i would be on the treadmill so we're gonna keep it going all spring summer winter long and we're gonna see one of my um aspirations in life is to run a marathon and you know i did a 5k before or whatever it was all right i did stop a lot you know and i don't know i don't want to stop so i've been doing pretty well um these are the iconic um i want to say these are the icon ray bands i don't know but i've had these ray bands for years when i tell you guys for years i was so obsessed back in like 2012 2011 2012 when um everybody was wearing this particular style and these that's what year i bought these so i'm the type of girl i keep up with all of my stuff pretty much like everything that i bought over the years i keep up with it unless my sisters have it or something like that but anyway um yes i have goals and aspirations to become a real runner um so i'm just like kind of like slowly easing into it i guess if you will and i'm starting to just do like cross country type style and just hop off that treadmill because the treadmill isn't really good for your legs and your ankles anyway first of all running isn't even really good for your legs and your ankles but on the flip side i do lift a lot of weights i am i have a lot of strength upper body and lower body strength and so as long as you keep up with the strength in your body running will be all right for you but in the long run and long term like you know when you get up there in age like running really isn't that good for your body so i want to get it while i still can while i'm still young so that's what i'm practicing and working on now and yeah and so what i'm still reading of course this is the next day i just talked to you guys yesterday still reading home by marilyn robinson still reading on some dub um after our, after my run i'm going to come back home shower and kind of just get ready for the day it's pretty early it's 10 o'clock in the morning um and i'm gonna probably go sit out somewhere and once again enjoy this weather because i start a new well i've started a new job I'll talk about that a little bit later. It's completely different from anything that I've ever done. It's completely different from what I'm used to. Um, and it is gonna take a lot of my time. So I just want to get back in my like routine of like how I read when I'm working. Cause I haven't, I haven't had a, a job in two months. Like I've been just chilling out for two months and I've enjoyed it, but I'm also ready to get back to work. And I'm, re I'm really excited about this job to be honest with you guys um i'm just excited about it it's just something different it's something new something more chill something that's not gonna like stress me out the way that teaching was stressing me out so yeah anyway so i want to take in and enjoy this like spring transitional weather where it's just not too hot um and i can sit outside and read so i'm gonna pick a place and i'm gonna read i have a little bit over I have one third of Lonesome Dove left. So if we broke it up into thirds, um, actually no, I'm over I'm over the third mark. So let's say I broke it up into fifths, no thirds. I have less than a third of the book to go. How about that? Um, yeah, and I could probably finish it today but i'm not going to do that because i really am interested in um still reading from marilyn robinson i don't know when i start a book that i really like i can't neglect that book either like i can't neglect uh home right now even though it's completely short it's way shorter than lonesome dove i still got to give a little bit of my time to home so i'm gonna try to finish lonesome dove in the next couple of days so i'll probably finish it 
up. I give about four hours today, about four hours tomorrow. I'll finish Lonesome Dove um, tomorrow. So yeah, we'll finish that tomorrow. And I'll just have to wrap that up. I'll talk more in depth about Lonesome Dove either. And it's, I'll always promise that I'm gonna do like separate videos and I don't, I haven't done one since I did. Um, since I did um, Trust, but I've read some amazing books that deserve their own video, such as The Idiot. So anyway, I'll have to talk about Lonesome Dove in my April wrap up video or in its own video more because it's just an epic and you know we'll go from there but anyway we'll we'll talk we'll chat um for sure later on um after my after my run and after um after my run and after I get myself ready for the day. It's so beautiful outside. I'm trying to see what do I want to put on. I'm, I'm that type of person. I like to dress for, oh God, everything's going wrong. My hair done came down. I guess I'll put my hair up when um, I get ready to go running. Um, but anyway, I get, I get that way. I get really excited about, um, good weather like i get massively excited about having good weather it's like really it just really excites me having great weather you know what i mean and so yeah i'm just i just get like that so i want to enjoy it put on one of my great little summertime outfits because i have so many because you know we've been covered up wax my legs i literally have not had my legs out all <laughs> fall winter long um and just like you know enjoy the weather and the sunshine and like i love to read outside you know i need to like deck out my um balcony i have a whole balcony off the side of my room and I don't, I don't decorate, I have not decorated out there. And it's a nice little over for like looking outside at the woods. I don't decorate out there. I don't sit out there. From time to time, I do open up the door though. From time to time, I do that. But other than that, I don't, I do not sit outside and I need to. But anyway, yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. In case you're wondering, on the weekends, Autumn goes with her dad. If you haven't heard me talk about my kid, she's not with me she's with her father um so that's the reason like I'm she's not here she's enjoying her time over with him so that's when I have my time to just like think about stuff you know and do things that I want to do so anyway yeah we're going on this run it's gonna be good it's gonna be great I'm going to what I tend to do is I run a mile straight without stopping and then I see how long I can go into that second mile without having to take a break. It's a mental thing. Running is very mental. When people say running is mental, believe them because it is. That tree just looked like a man. I don't know why. I don't know why it looked like it was a man standing in like off the side about to get it across the street, but it wasn't, it was a tree. It just bloomed and grew out of nowhere. I don't know what that, I've never, I've passed this way every day and I never noticed that tree. So anyway, yeah, and then I go into the second mile and uh, I see how long I can go into that second mile without stopping. And I tend to run, walk, run, walk, or speed walk. And what I've also gathered with speed walking is, it's like running. Oh my gosh, speed walking is just like running almost, except you're not jump, you know, you're not constantly jumping. So it's all about evolution. You know, the more you do anything in this life consistently, the better you get at it. So I just want to just like stick with it and continue to like go at it. That's the main goal. Just keep going, keep going, keep going. It's just like flexing that reading muscle. Sometimes I don't even realize I've been reading for hours because I've been doing it so often. You know what I mean? So it's the same thing with running and it'll be the same thing with my new job and everything else in between. So, you know, I'm not going to keep on rambling about that. But yeah, 
I guess we can go over my little running essentials. So I park in front of the trail to where when I'm done with mile one, my car is like sitting right there where I can just walk to my car and uh, grab some water. So the water bottles that I use, and this is my second one, I gave my other one that's kind of smaller, I gave it to Autumn. I use the Hydra Gear water bottles and I really like this one. This one got a lot of fancy stuff going on on it that I really love. Um, it has a compass on it. Of course, it has the rope that you can hold it. It has a whistle. You want me to blow the whistle? <laughs> anyway, it has a whistle just in case you like, man down, man down, you need help. And also like for when I go, I don't know where I'm gonna go. I can just like sit my, hold, put my keys on the um, the key ring and like, yeah, two types of handles. Hydra gear. Anyway, I like them and you know, they do like the Stanley. I think the Stanley keeps your ice colder than this. Depend it just all, honestly, it all depends on how much ice you putting in these bottles. So I don't put a lot of ice in there to keep my water cold. You don't need that much, but it'll literally keep your water ice cold for at least 48 hours. But I'm not keeping, I can say at least 10 because the longest I've ever kept water in the bottle that long is overnight. Like I sit it on the nightstand, you know, and I wake up and my water's still cold. Whatever water's left is still cold. That's how I know it at least keeps your ice, your bottle, your, your water cold for at least, at least 10 hours. That's how I know that. Cause I, I can sleep for like 10 hours. And then I have my running pack. I use the, um, I use the Kava, the Kavu bag and I wrap this around my waist and it has the rope on the back and it just has pockets and contraptions you know for you to keep your keys your phone your your airpod case you know whatever the case is out of my car whatever the case may be and that's all I use for when I'm running I might get a vest soon who knows but I like what I have so it does the job and yeah because this is too heavy though the, I can't run with that bottle so that's why I park where I park and that's why I like the trail that I'm um that I'm running on now I really like it for that specific reason that I can see my car after the the mile ends and yeah and that's what we're doing it's very windy today and the temperature is steadily rising at a faster rate than normal I wanted to get outside before um it got too hot but the high today is like 80 so it's gonna be hot anyway um so right now it's 73 so i'm gonna try to knock out a 5k which is uh three miles of course i'm gonna try to knock that out um in, a, in about an hour that'll take that'll take about 45 minutes who knows and if i stop if I speed walk it, if I speed walk the last mile, it'll take about 45 minutes to do um, to do that, to do that 5K. The garage sale, I just like going to garage sales sometimes just to see what people be having in their life. You know, garage sales, estate sales. I just like to go looking sometimes just to see like how, how other people have lived and you just find tons of interesting things. I just saw somebody's having a garage sale. Um, on my way to my destination. I'm actually about to be here. So it's not far from my home either, which is great, which is awesome, which I absolutely love. It's really hot in my car, but it's windy. Anyway, I'll see you guys after the run. All right, I'm sure I won't look as shiny. <laughs> I'll be shiny, all right, from sweat. I'll be shiny from sweat. All right, we're back. It's been, I only did two miles. <clears throat> oh, I forgot to put the timer off. 
So I did two miles and it took me 30 minutes. Um, I ran straight through the first mile. I ran straight through the first mile nonstop. And then I walk ran for the last one. Um, mostly walk. That's why it took so long. And sometimes I stop because I got a couple of cramps. But I'm really, all in all, very much proud of myself. Uh, so, yeah. We got it going. Um, I'm very proud. It was pretty crowded also this morning. Oh, more people than I thought was out here. Um, AC on. I'm very proud of that. I feel good. Stomach got a, stomach's got a little bit of cramps, but that's to be expected. Two miles down today, burnt 211 calories. And yeah, we we're getting her done. Okay. Also, I hadn't eaten anything, so I think that's why my energy was a little bit low. I really cranked out that first mile really well, um, but then it was just like. As soon as mile two started, it was like I felt the tiredness coming on. Um, I felt it. So, I'll eat something before next time. Maybe some oatmeal or something. And try to eat the oatmeal an hour before I go run. And we'll see what difference that makes. Um, I really can't gauge if it's the food or not. Because sometimes I run midday. You know, after I didn't had a full lunch. Sometimes. So, I don't really know. I haven't. Basically, I haven't been tracking like that. This is just very new. We've just been doing this for two weeks. So, yeah. Anyways, I'm about to get ready to go home. Um, I'm going to stop and get some coffee or something, though, so I can kind of get my momentum going. I'm feeling a little drained. But anyways, I'm going to um, go home. I'm sorry. I'm about to get some coffee. Head home shower and all of that. And um, or should I just wait? Because I'm about to go to a coffee shop. So no I'm not. No, I'm not. I'm gonna just go home. Shower, get myself ready for the day, and then I'll see y'all in a minute. Adios. good morning everybody it's me i'm back i'm back i'm back i'm back and i'm actually ready to wrap up this video this vlog and um i finished home last night by marilyn robinson still working on lonesome dove i still have 151 pages left of lonesome dove so i won't be wrapping that book up but i will be wrapping up home which is um the partner text or I, I don't want to say trilogy um i don't want to say um that it's the continuation of gilead because that is what i thought that it was i thought that it was going to be more about jack and um just about the things that we left off on with Gilead until I started reading it and I found that it is simultaneously happening at the same time as Gilead but from the perspective of Jack's little sister Glory uh, which I talked about that early on in this vlog so it's a part of the quartet we at, at one particular time people thought it was a trilogy because you have Gilead home and Lila but then she later on published Jack um, which I y'all saw about that a couple of weeks ago um so it's a quartet the gilead is a gilead is a quartet and so reverend john ames is speaking in gilead and then later on 
This is a series of letters and vignettes to his son because he has had a son later on in life and he's afraid that he will not see his son grow up. So he writes these letters to his son explaining things about life, his circumstances, and how great it has been to be his father. Then we learn of Jack coming home at the end of Gilead. And Jack is the prodigal son of Reverend John Ames' best friend, um, uh, John Bolton. Bolton? Yeah, Bowden. Bowden. And so here um, we learn more about the Bowden family. Reverend Bowden has eight children, but mainly this is um, about um his two his two children his middle his middle child uh glory and one of his older sons jack who we hear about at the end of gilead and like i said jack is a prodigal son he's a drunkard he is a liar he is a thief when he was growing up and he was younger and you find out that he is still some of these things um more or less now 20 years later he hasn't been home for 20 years no one has seen or heard from him in 20 years and so he's come home he wrote a letter and he says he's coming home meanwhile glory is already home she's 38 years old formerly um her dad thinks that she's married has been married but divorced but she never got married to this man um she was his fiance they broke up yada 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 she's a school teacher uh no longer wants to be a school teacher anyway she's decided that she's gonna come home and she's going to help take care of her her dad who's of course he's definitely dying um he's dying in this book um and so what you get is just the story of a family a broken family seemingly you know just kind of broken children children who have gone wayward who have not kind of sort of succeeded in life the way that their siblings have and so they have a lot of regrets and a lot of things that they are dealing with internally and so that's what you get here and it's just a series of conversations um between glory and jack mainly and of course you have the dad reverend Bolton bowden coming in and out talking to them and so you have reverend bowden definitely he's in love with jack jack is like his favorite kid but he also is very disappointed in jack at the same time and so you get that and you hear that in the conversations that they're having with each other and so it's kind of like along the lines of it's like i deserve this but at the same time how much is enough meaning jack and reverend bowden's relationship and it's like dad you know you're this old man we're trying to keep you alive, keep you afloat. But every chance you get, you're always talking down on me and I'm not into that. And then what you have is Glory kind of coming in and understanding where Jack is in life and where he's trying to be. And she comes in as a savior, as all women do, and try to help him through his issues and her with her issues continuously being neglected, which I love the way that um, Marilyn Robinson writes her because you can kind of tell it's like, women are just like steadfast regarding the way that they want to like impede on the lives of their male counterparts and just kind of nurture them and help them through things and then once again they kind of go their issues and problems sort of go unnoticed almost all the time and so you get a lot of that here in this novel but of course we we get a story of two siblings trying to redeem their relationship and also a man trying to or who's sort of kind of grieving he's grieving the life that he thought that he would have um without spoiling anything for you i will say that you know i told you guys already he's married to a black woman jack married a black woman who's from st louis who currently lives in memphis tennessee and he really wanted to do right by her but at the end of Gilead you find that it's just he just never could like get on the straight and narrow as far as finding a job proper housing and things for them and so he came back to Gilead trying to basically see like is this a place where I can bring my family but they don't know that at first and so he's just wrestling with that it's a it's a very heartbreaking story to be honest with you guys um but written so well Marilyn Robinson they're these books like I said these books are soul touching um you know once when you get into Marilyn Robinson's um canon and especially the Gilead Quartet you find a lot of you find a lot of these um 
these reviews regarding how it's religious writing um and it's not i wrote some notes hold on so of course she's shedding the light or shedding some light and speaking along the lines of the calvinist christianity community and how they present these ideologies of what the world is or what the world should be and how god is all seeing all knowing omniscient and he can i guess forgive you of everything and like make everything beautiful again or you should see things through this beautiful lens these beautiful eyes and how everything is properly positioned on earth for a reason which i do believe that okay i do believe that but her stories are so much more than just the fact that reverend john ames is a congregationalist and um and then i'm sorry pastor john ames and then reverend um reverend bowden which is glory and jack's dad he's always mentioning god quoting strip scripture and all these things and how intertwined that is within his views and living but you as you read especially through home you find that there's discrepancies between what their father believes and what is true about the world today especially those conversations regarding race and class they're definitely talking about it because it's a big part of jack's life because of course he has a black wife and a mixed race son so it's important to him to understand the views of others especially those that he was raised with and the way the world is actually going and how we can make it better and they talk about um she um Marilyn Robinson writes about um what is the word it's just done so it's done so well her prose is magnificent once again breathtaking um I can't think of it right now but there's just all of these intellectual conversations between Jack and Reverend John Ames who can't stand Jack can't stand him but you can tell that Jack is a very smart man he just can't he just can't get right and so it's just about it's just that story and the ending that i thought that i was gonna have i actually did not receive which is which is fine um but marilyn robertson helps you to just see the world see the world through all of these different lenses and see the she helps you to kind of put perspective or put an idea or put a thought to how once again i'm re i read all of these books to kind of just like help me gain perspective over my life and like think about things from how things used to be in the past the middle and the present you know what i mean and i don't know i just these books are magnificent home and gilead these books are great um they're great they're great they are wonderful this one is written i think this one would appeal to more younger like you know mid-20s something like that because one thing i like to say you know i gilead is a very special book very special um very slow paced uh it's very reflective and so like I said, it just is not for everybody, but it was perfect for me. And I'm a very outgoing, spunky person, a uh, vibrant personality, but I could sit and read this book and, and take so much from it. Um, and then what you get with Home, which I think still Gilead takes the top spot for me because of how much perspective it gave me and what it meant to me at the time that i read it in my life it means more to me but home was also definitely magnificent and it's more uh, grounded in like youth a little bit and kind of anyone who is kind of just struggling with their identity grieving the loss of the life that they thought that they would have and kind of going forward on a new path and just kind of you're just wayward in your own thoughts and you're in the way that you're moving in life and you want kind of like a novel 
that makes you understand kind of what you're going through home will be perfect for you or if you just want to read about siblings and the drama that is being a sibling and like home and what home is to you and what home could be or how home is not what it used to be uh, but it's familiar you know things of that nature and just wonderful writing once again great conversationalists like she writes conversation very well relationships have been written very well in this book i think home will be for you um it's just they're just great this is just a great book and uh i loved it once again i love marilyn robinson this is like my third marilyn robinson we had read housekeeping and these two we'll read lila next i'll give it some time but i'm kind of like pressed now to read about lila lila is reverend john ames pastor john ames wife we're gonna learn a lot about lila she from what i understand had a really bad upbringing um and she did some things in her life that she's not proud of and then she stumbled upon gilead and found pastor ames and they married and da da da, da. so that's what lila is going to be about and i absolutely have no idea what jack is going to be about because i know so much about jack now i'm absolutely hoping that he can get it together and get back with his family because that does not happen at the end of this book spoiler alert sorry he doesn't get back with them but at the end of the novel his wife comes to find him but she's two days too late she's too late two days too late Della is two days too late and I hated that I'm like golly you almost came and found your man but anyway that's the end of this video this vlog so I hope you guys enjoyed it made it to the end you know I know it was a more rambly type of vlog or whatever the case may be but that's just me in general I tried to just incorporate a little bit of my actual life or whatever hopefully you like that I'm just not sure what you want to see I figure all of my subscribers are coming because I make book content so anywho's anyways thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next upload deuces